Hello. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Perfect. I'm with Farah. Farah has been working with me on certain dialogue processes in various projects since 20 years or so, even with the Anna Lind Foundation. We are both in Berlin. And I will uh, show some slides. And if you don't have to, to open them. You don't have to read them. But you will get an idea that we have some background and some experience. And I will make these slides available for you later. So we are Positive Networks that was founded before the Expo 2000 in Hanover. And it's the youth and oldest entertainment performance festival, whatever group. And we do as one important thing, dialogues and happenings. But two days ago, we changed our names. So we are now Makers for Humanity. So we are not doing just positive, nice, net, which means kind things, but we really work in federated format in various environments. So we just did this uh, Makers for Humanity Festival for Futures and discussing 30 years challenges to science and politics, humanity, and you yourself. And my title today is For Futures. We have Fridays for Futures, we have Parents for Futures, we have Filmmakers for Future, but it's very important that we find common names, common methods, common approaches. And as you see here, these are scenes where we worked on Entrepreneurship Summit or around United Nations Web TV or on, on carpets or at the Entrepreneurship Summit, doing not just one thing, but many things at the same time. And this is not multitasking, but it's the free choice to one time go into information and education, and the other time maybe into transformation of politics, and then maybe even engaging in active protest, as I did for weeks when the Iraq war uh, was on the horizons. The most, more important thing than just doing all these segments is that I want you to consider looking into the details as a specialist and taking on a high stand, a bird's eye, because the issues are so complex and perplexing that it's very much needed that we have overview and orientation. And that is very much needed nowadays as we are all stuck in over specializations leading to over claims. This unfortunately is not correct, but I also need to inform you that I'm thinking about how we present, how we communicate and all these other things. So I, look into pictures like an icon or in symbols and indexes and frames. And I looked on how in history, science theory people uh, or religious people like Cusanos have been looking and working on that. So this was how we wanted 10 years ago with Farah to take on the uh, head of network for Germany Fortunately, we were not able because you have to be very rich to survive so much work without little pay. So this was Farah. She will talk about this a little later. She was also in Madrid, no, in uh, Marseille, Barcelona, Malta, and she's a journalist like me. And there we did magic round tables where we gave speaking time to the person we want to listen to. So it's not sharing, it's gifting attention. And that is one of the first things I want to share with you, our method of um, in a group in one hour telling, oh, here are two tokens for two minutes. I want to listen to you. 
So I mentioned that already yesterday, my thing is not sharing only, it's gifting and how that can be done in modern times. And we have done it as an Anna Lynn Salong invited guests from Tunisia, for example, because Anna Lynn said dialogue is not enough. Begegnungen, encounters make the difference. So we've been playing on such magic round tables for many, many years. And this is actually our exercise here with Four Futures. And I cannot go into the details, but I can tell you it was developed over 10 years with the Entrepreneurship Summit. But we are makers, we are not just founders, entrepreneurs. And so um, we looked with these founders into system and globe entrepreneurship, not just uh, social and cultural entrepreneurship. I myself am since the beginning in the European Citizen Science Association in the advisory board to really look a little bit what the common people, the stakeholders can do and not leave all to academics or politics or industry. And as our topic here today is dialogue among civilizations, I wanted to show you some publications. In some cases, Farah was also the co-author. We looked with Kofi Annan 20 years ago into the dialogue of civilizations and what needs to be done there. So my next thing is beside dialogue, it is going to the root causes, to the deep drivers. And with the um, UN, we have been publishing six years ago how to go to the common frames of references and to the deep drivers. So goal 17 of the SDG is really looking into the root causes, the drivers, the leverage point, we say. And it's all published in a journal called Mother Pelican. It is about solidarity and sustainability. All these and the slides you can read later because it's very important that we don't finance something for two or three years and then go to the next one, but do some wise funding strategies. And I played with these methods on structured dialogic design with the Millennium Project looking into the global challenges because we cannot only address the local issues, we also have to address the global issues and the sectorial and the historical issues. So um, here is how we do it with the Council of Churches. That is my second point. And I come now to the Bibliobox. That is a youth project, vocational training project we do in Europe. Uh, Erasmus Plus and other projects funding and local town and street care services to bring the young people together to develop their skills and their uh, capacities and their competences and make with their telephone box library boxes and the young people like in vocational training uh, situations learn in a voluntary orientation year or this in two weeks, but in other cases for the whole year, what is their drive? Do they really want to become an architect or a plumber? So these are our projects, um, really bringing art and the community, intergenerational learning and fun and everything together. The next point is how I want to address issues because you cannot just label them and give them a name, as I mentioned before. You can structure it in pie charts, you can structure it in three-dimensional space. And as the um, problem space is so really big, we have to develop extra senses and extra solution spaces I'm working very much with visualizers and people who can make nice graphics. So I think like the octopus, we have to de develop ways and means to be more smart because the problems are really on regional, national, 
global levels and we cannot do just this thing short term big picture. So again, with some visualizers, I worked on out of the box thinking and paradigm mapping. What does it mean? What is a mindset? And we do mindset and paradigm mapping. And there's a video about this also. You can look on YouTube. And this is actually what I just mentioned already. We have to structure the problematic, not just in one space, but in connected spaces. And this is a little bit what we have to do. Take our own viewpoint out, get the idea that um, we can develop mental models. So they are not just systems, they are models. And we humans are model making animals, the UNESCO wrote some time ago. So all these cartoons are available for you. And it goes really into brain studies. And the last um, impulse or seed of change I want to show you is uh, use uh, digital storytelling. When we work with young people and filmmakers, that they look into um, how do I become a filmmaker? How do I develop an idea from, for the storyboard? So to really get the idea on which position, which role, um, which story, which dramaturgy. And, and this is a project we do, or we started in Hamburg and now doing with, I think, three or four ministries in Luxembourg, because Luxembourg is a, is a state, but also a town. So it's very nice to really have the issues not just on one level, but really bringing the storytelling into a new form to have media which are creative and help us to think just beyond the boxes. So not just doing experiments and not just doing conversations, but really getting the whole possibilities together. So my proposal here was to show you some initiatives, some best practices, some seeds of change. And I think I covered all this seeds of change or all these impulses. I have much, much more um, slides for you, but I think we should go as the time is running into a little conversation. Maybe Farah, you have been with me for 25 years doing such dialogues. Maybe you tell us a little bit, why are you still doing it? And what was the difference in really empowering and giving voice and not just sharing time. Yeah, thank you, Heine, for this virtual traveling. Um, I just want to know, I, I, see, um, I see two other people here, but uh, uh, I see on the participation list that there are some more. I don't know. Or I'm. Yeah, we are six, including you. So, okay. So, but we, we, we cannot see the, the picture of the other people. Yeah, I mean, um, I was in the first group. I have been in room two together with uh, Seth Selleck from Sweden and with Russia, who is working uh, with him together. And they are doing a wonderful project about storytelling. So we have a lot of common in this. Um, and uh, one of our project is Magic Round Table we were also implementing on the first forum in uh, Barcelona. And uh, uh, well, I mean, as we are here a little group and uh, Heiner has just given us a lot of uh, impressions of all the work he's doing with different uh, organizations. Um, maybe you tell us uh, what you are doing. 
before we start with the conversation. Oh, do you have questions? Because it's like just five minutes left. Okay, I, I have only like a short question because also I work in dialogue facilitation and debate training with youth here in Egypt, young people, uh, mainly university students and as well as like graduates. Uh, but like I'm doing that on a voluntary basis, like uh, I am part of, of two different projects of Annaline Foundation, but also, yeah, I, 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 I've shared an, an, an action plan uh, in the first round where I did that with my university students as I, as I work also, I teach in a university here in Egypt, but that was like based on a voluntary thing. I did it like uh, something, it's like a personal effort, not with a partnership with some organizations or like being funded by by a different body or something like that. So the question here, how to take your action or like to grab fund or to get partners, um, yeah, to, to, to hold your project in or to build your own hub since you're working in dialogue in intercultural dialogue. I, did, I used to do that online to bring people with others uh, from different cultures online. So, how to, to make your hub like a formal thing, to get partners and to, to make it a formal, something that has been uh, yeah, recognized by, by uh, in, in your country. I, I don't know if you get me or not. Yes, of course. Heiner, can you tell us something? Well, it's difficult to grab funds. And sometimes you work on the local level like this telephone boxes, we just have 17 in Berlin and all over Europe, then you have to take the neighbors and the, then you have to take the schools or the church parishes. And it really depends what you are doing. Important is that you have the stakeholders who want to do something intergenerational dialogue or develop these methods of gifting uh, now in, in Zoom environments. That is the next step what we are doing because this time credits we have, 60 units for 60 minutes is something, it is a virtual tone. You gift and he can give it to someone else or this person can give it to someone else. So it's a very floating game and then you have to look for shared developers. And then maybe you have to do it with a commission and Anna Lind Foundation and certain governments. It is not an easy question you have for me. It really depends what you want to do. Anne Katrin, mute yourself. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation and the great work that um, also developed through, through the years as society develops. Um, I love the, the change of names um, to makers for humanity. I think that's, that's a great, a great uh, goal also within it. And also that you said um, that um, dialogue is important, but encounters really make the difference. And that what we heard yesterday as well, where we said, okay, you have to taste culture. It's not just you can't just see it. And I, I would be very curious how you are um, also because everybody needed to uh, adopt uh, their goals uh, due to the current situation. So how, how um, did you go through this process of adopting since we kind of have the only the dialogue at the moment uh, since we can't meet virtually? Um, and also I, I have the feeling that um, uh, being humans is more important than ever. Um, maybe this is also a chance that we can meet again as, as human beings and not as nationalities or race or anything because every the whole world is in the same situation and dealing with the with this challenge so how did your organization go through this process that would be very interesting for me. Well, this method i developed uh, in the cold war before the wall came down and there it was high level political meetings and these were all men and they were talking 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 and David Bohm said, how to stop the talkers? That's the ultimate goal. So we really have to come together. And um, I wrote an essay, ohne Zusammenhang, kein Zusammenhalt. Without a context, no staying together, no coherence, 
co no connectedness. And um, this is actually what is needed that we define in a globalized cyber culture world broader contexts. And that is actually the deeper structure behind my work on mindsets and paradigm mapping. So Farah can tell you a lot of anecdotes how we made peace dialogues when the people in the board wanted to throw each other out and through this gifting method, they felt th they are not going to, to, into a fight mode, but into a encounter mode, deep listening, you say in, in some methods. And this what we do with an Annalyn system node in Cyprus and Nicosia, where we do multi-track diplomacy and peacemaking, where I'm with the United Nations De Democracy Fund, looking into methods that the traditions find ways to come to common concepts, not to just common wording or labeling, but going to the influence maps. And that is all what I showed on one slide, developed before the Club of Rome in the late 60s. And Farah and me are journalists, so we are just a little bit uh, like butterfly on bumblebee in open space, trying to fertilize and bring a positive news across. That's why we say positive networks and net with double T means this hospitality and kindness. So where are you in Berlin, in Germany? I'm in Munich, so south. I'm representing the south and I work for the municipality of Munich. Um, for the Department of Education and Sports. And we do have an institute for teacher development and um, I'm coordinating the um, high school student exchange programs for the city. Then with we should bring you together with our project in Luxembourg. Four ministries really going from the municipal level to really the broader level. And I was two weeks with a Großherzog two weeks at the climate summit last year in, in Madrid to really bring all these issues which are so complex and perplexing into something that the people in the street, we always speak about stakeholders meet. And I was in the old Rathaus and the new Rathaus in Munich and maybe we stay in touch and definitely I, I uh, make the connections with what we do with kindergarten or youth for planet. Sounds great. Thank you, Heiner. I think they will share our uh, emails or whatever. Mm. Ja, aber ich glaube, wir können jetzt mittlerweile Deutsch reden, weil wir unter uns sind. Wir, <laughs> haben, wir haben leider unsere ägyptische Freundin verloren. Sinamis ist Oder ist da noch jemand? Sinamis, Sinamis. Are you still there? We don't see your camera, but are you still listening? Sinamis? Doesn't look like. Ja. Yeah. Ich denke, es sind sowieso nur noch zwei Minuten. Das war ganz nett an Katrin. <lacht> ähm, komm mal nach Berlin, wenn diese Zeiten vorbei sind. <lacht> sehr, sehr gerne. <lacht> Ja. ja, ich habe gerade noch mal den, äh, wir, waren, wir waren ja auf allen Foren vom ersten angefangen in Barcelona, da hatte ich einen langen äh, Artikel geschrieben, da habe ich gerade mal den Link dazu auf Englisch in den Chat getan, das gibt es natürlich auch auf Deutsch, auf meiner Webseite ähm, und ich weiß nicht, vielleicht können wir noch mal ähm, unsere Lady aus äh, Ägypten noch mal kurz schreiben, dass sie vielleicht mal mit uns in Kontakt tritt. Sie arbeitet ja mit Dialog. Das finde ich sehr interessant. Und äh, auch was die Rasha macht, diese Dialogprozesse und diese Spiele, was wir machen mit Magic Roundtable, ist ja auch eine Art äh, Kommunikationsspiel, wo man sozusagen äh, seine eigene Redezeit verschenkt. Ja, und ähm, äh, das 
gibt eben, und es ist eben ein offener Dialog, das heißt auch, wenn es themenzentriert ist, themenzentriert nicht durch die Leute, die einfach an dem Tisch sitzen, nicht, dass man sagt, wir reden heute über das, sondern es wird bestimmt durch die Leute, die da sitzen. Und ähm, dieses äh, Geschenk, also dass man seine eigene Redezeit schenkt, äh, dass man also deutlich macht, äh, wenn jemand redet, dann müssen auch Leute zuhören, weil sonst macht das ja keinen Sinn. Und dieses Spiel visualisiert sozusagen diesen, diesen Kontext. So we continue in English. Hello, Zinab, you are back. <laughs> I was just yeah, missing you. Yeah, connected. I was Thank just, you. yeah. So I just, for you, I mean, maybe you can uh, uh, send us your email, maybe in the chat. I also put uh, an article in the chat in English about the Forum 2010 in uh, Barcelona, where we also shared this mm -hmm. uh, magic round table. And we have also some rules also in English we could send to you. So I think uh, probably we are not the best uh, for looking for funds but i mean of course we can give you a lot of uh, connections maybe that could help you with your dialogue processes there and thank you uh, it would be great you know it would be yeah. great yeah thank so you. i think uh, maybe we could be of some yeah i've seen you have just sent us uh, your email uh, yeah so maybe we we I've could get in uh, in contact we have okay, to make that sure be, that okay. we save the chat right away because it will be deleted um, when we are going back to the main group. But on the slides, if you request the uh, slides, maybe from through the organizers, there are links and then you can find these articles in English and all this. So, um, Anne Katrin, okay. I think we exchange <coughs> emails and it would be very nice that you don't feel overwhelmed when i said fasten seat belts what's behind <laughs> that is not, you see i i worked with these young people in this constellations aufstellungen <clears throat> and then the youth came to the idea of warms eye fish eye birds eye group eye generation eye or me model you model they model other models go from beyond this short term and me to this really we and they and others and not have this um, du dualistic uh, splittering mindset where everything is put into boxes and labeled and that makes people very very unsafe we need mm -hmm. orientation and we need overview and that's a little contribution on the way. I think they throw us out, so we yeah. have to leave. And I just want to say that it was wonderful, your presentation, and I really enjoyed it. And like what grabbed my attention is that dialogue, and then I wanted to join that room. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. And for you, Farah, as well. <laughs> thank you.